welcome to Badgedamia, a podcast so educational two professors could be hosting it. Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Dickenview, and joining me is Dr. Bill Pennyman. Welcome to Badgedamia. Bill is on a wilderness adventure right now, and he did set up some like, sorry, Bill, it's kind of creepy, this thing that lets people track him. And the last time that I tried it, I got an error message. So send good vibes. We hope Bill hasn't gotten eaten. Um, Also, though, when he told me that he was doing the tracking thing, I thought it was going to be like him wearing like a GoPro or something and some like cool TV thing. Yeah. And I felt like that's a plot of like a sci, like one of my adolescent, like, you know, my why I fiction books. And I was like, it never ends well, though. Right. He would get eaten by a bear and then we would see it live on television. Absolutely. And it would be like a lesson in like why surveillance is bad. I don't. Or know. he'd see Bigfoot and that would be cool. That would be cool. So in our in his absence, we have with <laughs> us the wonderful, the witty co-host Kim. And Kim. I got a question for you. So, okay, okay. If you could ban any fashion trend, what would you ban? Okay, co- so I kind of have more than one. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So I know that apparently they're really comfortable, but the whole like high waisted mom jean jeans thing that has come back is absolutely not okay, and I hate every second of it, and I don't understand why people wear them because they are not flattering and like the most fit people look terrible in them like that's not a fashion that anyone can pull off so are you against all high-waisted jeans or just like the mom high-waisted jeans I think I'm against all but that's because I don't have a torso so if I wore high-waisted jeans they'd be up under my like underwire of my bra and it wouldn't look it just so I might be prejudiced because of my own shortcomings as a short torso human. See, I don't understand. I mean, I don't mind like mid level jeans, you know, not like the 1998 Britney Spears low ones, no. but also not these super high waisted ones. Right. When it's that high, I'm like, I just don't want stuff, I don't want to be held in. It's how I feel about sports bras too. Some people love sports bras. That crap smashes you. I got one uniboob and it looks terrible. I just, you know, I'm about like letting it hang out, I guess. I like it. What's your other one that you're just like, "Mm." Um, I don't like the sweatpants that say juicy or sexy on the butt. I really like no yeah I don't, like it. I don't like it and I don't know that those are back they were quite popular when I was in college um but I again free Britney but a little bit I think it was Britney and Christina that made those really popular but I don't like those either so I hope those don't come back I I am very skeptical of anything that happens on the booty mm-hmm. of clothing Right, mm-hmm. whether it's like weird jeweling or bedazzling mm-hmm. or definitely not words. You should mm-hmm. not have words on your butt. No. Um, so I would support that. I don't know what I feel about this new hair trend of mullets like coming back in earnest. Oh, I didn't know mullets were back. Oh so I my husband had a mullet temporarily during the pandemic. And it was totally a joke for him. Okay. Right. And it was awful, but um, I'm a supportive wife. So I, you know, we had fun with it, Mm -hmm. but like, I've now seen lots of like 10 year old boys and prom pictures of like, you know, I have some friends whose kids are going to prom and stuff and they are in earnest. They have mullets. And it's not ironically. I don't think so. Because like the the Minnesota hockey hair is a thing that um, I discovered when I lived up there that all the high school boys who are on the hockey teams, they grow mullets during hockey season. 
And it's like this, they do like a fun, like who has the best mullet on the team thing. Um, but I was not really a hockey state and it's not hockey season. So I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I, the state of the world is perplexing. <laughs> so this yes. episode was full of interesting fashion choices. Um, moving from Katie's sparkly plaid coat dress thing yeah. to Brendan's bangs yes um, bang singular bang. bang it was i was i didn't realize this i have something called a curtain bang going oh it's, they're curtains <laughs> all right anyway uh, and i don't know that i've had bangs since kindergarten first grade maybe i've always had because i would get like blah and so i just have always pulled them back but we are curly haired girls. We are curly haired girls. Hard. And I like having bangs, but it requires that I straighten them. And then right now it's so humid mm -hmm. or if it rains on me, mm -hmm. they grow back up and I look, it's a situation. Now, and I get like, if I do have bangs, like they are ringlets on my forehead, not a shot, not like a solid bang it is like individual ringlets all over my forehead if I mm -mm. but Brendan's bang is like a situation um, it is it is and I thought it was because I when I watched it the first time on Monday I didn't notice it until the cocktail hour and rose ceremony but last night when I re-watched the whole thing again and took notes diligent diligent notes um, it was there the whole time and I couldn't stop staring at it. It was like a mole on someone's face that you're trying not to look at. <laughs> that solid bang that was going horizontally when everything else was kind of up. It looked like, what was that movie with Cameron Diaz where she put- There's the something about Mary. Her. Yep, there's something about Mary. It had that vibe to it. So, so in my note about Brandon, I wrote, he's like if Zach Morris was in a windstorm. <laughs> I think I, I fully support that description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you all have a fashion observations about this episode, feel free to tweet them at us, you know, you know, include us so that we know um we want to hear you judge your judgments well and katie the first thing katie walked out in i was like it's 1996 because it was like that plaid short jacket and the jeans and it looked almost exactly like something i would have worn in 1996 because you're yeah, transitioning so out of the nirvana plaid period into that like mid 90s clueless type time period and it definitely was a 90s look that she had on. And that like brown color too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such like a 90s color. I don't know how I feel about, you know, when you're a, when you're a teenager and your parents say things like, oh, this will come back into fashion someday. And you know, like in my head, I'm like, yeah, and it will be awesome. And now it, it's happening and it's not awesome. Yeah. So I was recently um, on the stage and we were with, a, there were a bunch of UNI students in the cast who were awesome to work with and a bunch of high school students in the cast who were awesome to work with. But multiple times they would show up to rehearsal and I'd be like, oh dang, I wore that in high school. Like stuff is back. Like the um, baby tee with the spaghetti stra strap dresses is 100% back and several of them wore them. And I just kind of went, oh, that was such a comfortable ensemble. I'm kind of glad that one's coming back because I would wear that again. But it's the night, the late 90s are back. Lots of bare midriffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, and... mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm feeling a be shirt. I wore a lot of rugby shirts in middle school. So maybe the like the solid block rugby shirts will come back too. Oh yeah. That was a look. Sometimes they'd have the little rubber buttons on them too. Yes, and mine melted in the dryer. So they were like <laughs> funky. 
we must set a very strong dryer. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so this episode starts with sort of like a recap of all the Thomas drama mm -hmm. before it swiftly moves into this truth or dare date. Mm -hmm. And the afternoon portion of the date is truth or dare. Um, right. So they start out with some dares. Did you have a favorite dare? I mean, I I enjoyed watching the men eating carbs. I always I always like, um, especially the guy from the gym, um, Mike, who hadn't eaten a carb in seven years and had to eat a plate full of Twinkies. That made me smile. But I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I actually enjoy, even though they only showed two of them, I enjoyed the whispering sweet nothings into the giant ear. Because Andrew S. went first and his accent comes and goes. Like when he's talking in his, his um, head interview things, he doesn't have an accent. But when he was whispering sweet nothings into the ear, he brought out his quasi, it's kind of English, but not 100% English accent. And I don't know if you noticed that, but it, he doesn't, it's not solid throughout the whole episode. I was so confused about this because I thought that he was just playing when he introduced himself. So like when they got out of the limo and he came in and introduced himself, I thought that it was him that had like a British accent as a joke. Mm -hmm. And now it's, but then like, she's like, oh, I love his, I was like, is this real or not? Yeah. And like you, I also recognize that it moved in and out. Mm -hmm. it's weird I'm liking Andrew S a lot yes but the accent thing is confusing <laughs> I wonder if he pulls it out because he's listed as living in Vienna Austria so I wonder if he's like a military kid who's just moved around a whole lot and maybe Vienna was where the last place he was stationed before college or whatever um but you know, there's always those guys at the bar who you do a fake accent because they know that girls love a love an accent. So if they're trying to hook up with a girl, they'll they'll throw out a fake accent. So I'm wondering if he did it as a joke when he did the introduction, and then he realized she liked it so much that he's trying to keep it going, but he sucks at keeping it going. So like when he remembers, he brings it back, and then he forgets most of the time. But he did like way better than Greg at least. Oh, at the sweet nothings. And Greg thought he did well, and that makes me sad for him. Like, let me review the states for you. Right. And he did like if he had done the fifty states song and like sang all the fifty states in alphabetical order into the ear, that would have impressed me. But he was just like randomly saying states as he remembered them in his brain. <laughs> Geography, so sexy. Thank you. <laughs> it was, it was something. Yeah, I really, I like the Twinkies a lot because I would like to have that dare. There's also like Alfredo and mashed potatoes mm -hmm. and gravy, which I think it was pretty hot there. So yeah, and the potatoes didn't look very good. Just definitely in so. Okay, so. Then they, they also had the waxing. What do you think about the waxing? Um, I think we learned that Trey has a very hairy butt. Um, <laughs> that that's where he chose to be waxed. Um, okay. I feel like maybe you don't want to let the entire nation know that you have a very hairy butt. <laughs> like, um, but I also appreciated that the other guy in the team was doing the waxing. Like you're letting someone who doesn't know what they're doing put hot wax on you and then rip it off of you. And I love that after Christian like waxed him, he was like, I think you have more wax on you now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and every no, and maybe somebody did and they didn't make the edit, but the fact that no one did the, oh, Kelly Clarkson comment from 40 year old virgin when they got the wax pulled off of them just makes me sad for that missed opportunity. You know, I wonder if they're like having to, like, I wonder if Christian is having to like now help Trey wash his back in the shower. <laughs> let me, let me pick the wax off for you. 
this group of guys seems seem incredibly close and bonded so yeah. it, could, it could be real yeah their friendship li- their friendship lives forever even after the show is after they're booted off the show that's where the true love lies mm-hmm. on the bachelorette mm-hmm. on the bachelorette so the pepper proposals um so they totally just did this like two seasons ago that's what I thought and I also like I don't know that it's and I know that that's part of the show is to like be hurt and then like deal with being hurt all the time but I don't know that I would want to see 10 guys um eat pepper and then be crying because it's so spicy and then try to tell me I don't know that 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 would be appealing to me like because they were a you just met these guys so these terms of endearment don't really seem that sincere because they don't know each other very well and then Greg was it Greg that pulled out the love like are you are you sure because it's been two weeks um so I I loved the outtakes at the end when Tasha and Caitlin were eating the peppers and losing their minds, but I didn't necessarily, I don't know, that dare wasn't as much fun for me just because it just seemed weird that they would eat these and then cry and then it felt very insincere. So I think that it's like a funny idea, but I get, I get uncomfortable during any of these group dates where they're like make them sort of act out relational things whether it's like mm-hmm. a wedding or a proposal right. or whatever right. I almost like ooh, like they get them in wedding dresses I find that really uncomfortable yeah yep um Greg using the l word so the first time that he said it it was like I think it was just kind of like flip it, but then he like repeated it. Um, I didn't feel like it was like, I didn't feel like it was an earnest from him, but I did think, I thought it was like, Ooh, should we like read into anything with him using this word? I don't know. Do you think these dates like this, like the, the dare date does very much to create bonding or does it teach the bachelor no. anything the whole concept of the group dates has and I'm, I'm about to say something as if I've been watching the show for 20 years this is my third season but has always confused me because you don't really get to know any of them and all you're doing is like every group date they're kind of looking they're making them look like idiots um because either they're um you know doing inappropriate sculpture out of clay, uh, Blake, um, or um, like wrestling or some sort of full contact sport where eight people get injured. Um, I don't know, I just, but then when you get them in the smaller dates, then it's like you're voting one against each, you're pitting one against each other. So I guess if the show was six months long, they could do more individual dates, but they can't do that, so. Well, and I think that, you know, for, for me, I think it creates some bonding among the men, Mm -hmm. but I actually don't know that I, and I think maybe there's something valuable about Katie getting the opportunity to observe those relationships form and how they interact with each other. But I always have thought that it's weird when the bachelor or the bachelorette sort of sits on the sidelines watching these things it doesn't feel like an opportunity to like really get to know or advance their relationships. I agree. Now the evening portions of the dates are a little bit different and the Mm -hmm. evening portion of this group date, the theme was like truth. And it started with Andrew S um, kind of taking her in and kind of suggesting that he was going to pay her back. But then he lifts up this like, Mm -hmm. I guess, serving platter. And there's like, Taco Bell on it, I think. Maybe Lunchable. Maybe, and then like candy. Yeah. And I thought it was what was funny to me is like that's fine. Like if you want to enjoy some Taco Bell, enjoy some Taco Bell. But then they're like 
foodies and like clink their like cheap tacos and she, then she takes a bite and she's like mm. and I'm like is it really that good or like have they been starving you well and how cold is that food at this point like Taco Bell is okay in certain instances at the best of times with like but if it's not 9 30 on a Sunday morning and you feel awful and this is the only food that you think will maybe sell your stomach after a night out which spoiler alert it won't um cold taco bell just seems awful to me but at least yeah. they were they were eating i and i appreciated them actually eating on camera because you don't see that very often so at least they ate a little bit but i'm sure it was terrible Yes, and I liked, I enjoyed the sort of like the vibe between the two of them. I really appreciated they seemed playful and comfortable and to get along really well. Mm -hmm. How romantic it is is harder for me to gauge. But so at one point though, he like, I, he like starts complicate, like co complimenting her. And it's like, you know, no one understand has ever understood me the way that you do. Again, how long have they known each other? Like, what kind of girls are you dating where one woman who you've been around for probably 70 minutes total in three weeks knows, understands you more than everyone else you've dated? Well, and I'm like, I don't, I understand that we as viewers do not get to see everything. Right. But it is really hard for me to believe that that, was an earnest that that comment was an earnest and there is like some really funny tweets about it that were sort of like katie i like you so much you are pretty and a girl and a person <laughs> <laughs> so i like your eyes they look nice when they're open you have two ears i don't know <laughs> like it, it's really funny to me so i thought that i would do a really quick extra credit on how to give a compliment and this is Ooh. This is quick and a fast one. So I haven't done a ton of research around um, compliments, though there is a lot in communication research about compliments and politeness and things like that. But several years ago, I went to a workshop on compliments and it was really interesting and I guess the two takeaways that I think are worth offering here is that when you give compl compliments, you should be as specific as you can. And then the second thing is, and these aren't specific, right? Like if you're like, right. you have ears, that's not specific enough. You know, if you're Thank like, you. hey, no one <laughs> understands me like you do, then offer some examples of how it is that Katie understands you in a unique okay. way or what those things are. And that will offer a more genuine, real, and like being really specific is helpful. Then the other thing is, and I think this is so interesting, and I did do a little bit of research before recording this about that, but um, what I learned at this workshop is that a lot of times our compliments are rooted in stereotypes. So what I mean by that is that we are likely, for example, to compliment, women are likely to get complimented about their appearance or about things that we would assume women would do well, right? Okay. So like, oh, I really like your home. You're, you know, it's sort of like if you've ever gone to someone's house and they'll be like, and they're making dinner and you're like, oh, thank you so much for making dinner. This was so great. And they're like, I didn't make it. My husband did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're like, so a lot of times we make, we um, do that with race as well. So we're more likely, for example, to compliment a black person on something that we might stereotypically assume a black person does well. Mm -hmm. And so one of the reasons that you also need to be very specific in how you give your compliments is to also reflect and think, am I giving this compliment that is very specific to this person or am I perpetuating stereotypes 
in the way that I'm engaging in compliments. And I, that like blew me away at the time. And of course, um, I do some research in gender and I knew, for example, that women are more likely to, in the workplace even, get compliments about their appearance and things like that, where like compliments for men are based more on their actions or their job, like the job that they're doing. Mm, And so like I had known some of those things or, um, there's some debates about like, are when men give compliments, are they more goal oriented? Where when women give compliments, are they more about re, um, establishing relational connections? And so it's um, there. There's some like research and questions around that too. But I think it's really interesting. Um, maybe I'll learn some more about this and offer up some more on some future podcasts. But um, Andrew S, if you are listening, those are some quick tips on how to give a good compliment. I like it. Do you have any hints on how to accept a compliment if you're bad at accepting compliments? Ooh, that would be a good one. Because that's something I struggle with. I'm very bad at accepting compliments. So that's what I was like, oh, it's a, oh gosh. So, I like to say something really self-deprecating after someone. I know, it. right? Like, you should have seen what I looked like five minutes ago. Boy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You look really good. And I'm like, oh, I got a booger in my nose right now. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I end up saying something like, oh, you know, oh, I'm right, uncomfortable. Right, right, right. So then I say something that really should probably make me more uncomfortable. <laughs> but, oh. Um, I don't, I don't know that I have any great advice off the top of my head, but I, we can look it up. Um, cause I homework. think homework. Sorry, Absolutely. I just gave us homework. Bachademia homework. So there is like this huge montage of like men saying deep things to Katie. Um, I think, you know, Mike said some deep things. And I, I did like that because I was like, oh, I think that they're having some like really heartfelt conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so Greg, at sort of the start of this date, he admitted that he was feeling a bit jealous. And then they do have some time together, um, a little bit of a one-on-one on the group date. And he, you know, he admits that he's having some trouble with that. And she reciprocates by sort of telling him that she's falling for him. Um, She also says, you are just being you and that is impressive, right? So thoughts on Katie and Greg, Greg's admission. Okay, so I have a couple, I have a couple of things. Um, One of the, one of my notes on Greg in my, my notebook of notes is that he kind of reminds me of an older Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh. His this face? is the 90s episode. Oh, you it all, is. by the way. Oh, Kim, look at my t-shirt. Kim's got a totally 90s t-shirt on. Describe your t-shirt, t-shirt for people that are listening. My t-shirt is full of 90s heartthrobs. Uh, JTT is on it. Leo is on it. Jason Priestley is on it. Um, I believe Johnny Depp is on it. Um, Zach Morris is on it, or I guess... Paul Mark Gosler, I shouldn't say his character name when he's a human being. Um, but so I thought that his face kind of reminded me of an older JTT, but then I was on BuzzFeed today and there was weirdly an article about JTT and he doesn't look like what Greg looks like. So he aged differently than what I thought he would age, I guess. But I thought that Katie seemed more into his kissing than she did Andrew S's. When she and Andrew kissed, it was more like their mouths were touching, but nothing else was touching. And with Greg, there were hands, there was body movement. They seemed very much into it. Um, I can't get past how bad he was at sexy talk. So he needs to work on that before next week if he wants to get my approval, because that was that was rough. But I think that they seem to really have a connection and I could see him being in the final four. Absolutely. I mean, my one concern for Greg is that I feel like he's really set up as the front runner. And so I feel like something will probably interrupt that. Um, And it's weird because I like him. 
but it's also hard to figure out why you know he's kind of sheepish and there's something very genuine and like boy next door about him Mm -hmm. um that was the jtt vibe i got from him oh yeah and but at the same time you know i know about i know that his dad passed but i don't feel like i know that much about him otherwise um but you know i'll rip for him so then we come back and the Trey Andrew feud takes off. So the the guts of this drama is that Trey is like, it is my duty to tell her what a jerk Thomas is because she can't see it. Mm-hmm. She's not seeing it. And Andrew's like, dude, we're having an awesome time. Mm -hmm. Let it be. Her relationship with Thomas is her relationship with Thomas. Like, she'll figure it out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on this? Um, I actually agree with both of them. Because we had to deal with Victoria for way longer than we should have. And I'm not comparing Thomas to Victoria because we haven't seen his bra once (laughs) on the show. Um... But sometimes, and she seemed to appreciate that Trey told her, sometimes the person doesn't know the real personality of someone because they're only seeing them on their best behavior around them. But also, I don't like a tattletale. So I don't know. I'm super torn on on if Trey should have done it or not. I think it's very interesting that she gave him the rose because he tattled. Is he going to become the five-year-old on the playground that tattles on everybody now because he sees that he gets rewarded for that? I don't know. See, I think that one of the things is is that it usually backfires. And I feel like kind of this happened to Katie, right? Um, Mm -hmm. On Matt James's season is that you kind of get friended. Mm -hmm. And on one hand, I think that Katie has been pretty upfront that she wants the men to be honest with her and that this is really important. And for that reason, I can understand why Trey would want to share that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I did think that they had such a good vibe going and I could see not wanting to, I could see being like, maybe I do need to bring this up, but maybe not now. Right. (laughs) Because it was such a good night. And as soon as they were done talking, she like ended the night and a lot of the guys didn't get their time with her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's hard because I think on one hand, there are ways that I think because of the way that the show's set up, that maybe a person can hide some of their stuff from you. Mm -hmm. But um, on the other hand, I do think that trusting that Katie would be wise enough and, you know, observant enough to notice that. I mean, she's already had red flags waved for her with regards to Thomas. So I don't, I don't know. There's like a part of me that's like, she would have figured it out. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that Andrew was amazing on this episode. Like regardless of where you like fall on this drama, I think Mm -hmm. that we got to see so much more of his personality and I like him. He has a fantastic smile. Like I, you're, I, I want to make him smile as much as possible because he has such a great smile. And so it's fun when it comes out. Absolutely. Um, so then after this group date, it's like, I think it's the next day. And Tasha comes on and she says, okay, there's someone that was on my season who I think you need to meet. Okay, one, thoughts about this interaction with Tasha? Um, I'm pretty sure this episode was filmed completely all over the place and out of order because I saw on the internet that I'm not the only one that noticed this, but the outfit that Katie was wearing when Tasha came in to tell her about Blake 
was the outfit she was wearing on the during the Nick Vial circle conversation. Interesting. Well, so you know, there was a big debate. She was actually with Nick on his podcast. So she went oh. on to his podcast and he said, You knew. You had to have known that Blake was, you knew it was Blake when Tasha told you, didn't you? And he, she was like, no, no, I didn't know. And he was like, but you cried. Like, why were you so emotional? And what Katie sort of said to defend herself is she was like, I didn't know it was going to be Blake. I didn't know who it was going to be. But I was emotional because I knew that it was going to change the dynamic that I had with the men that were already there. Oh, interesting. You know, mm -hmm. I wish it was Joe. I loved Joe. Lo Joe forever. Yeah. Um, Blake, I don't, you know, we've, we've talked and you guys talked last week about the right reasons. I don't think Blake is there for the right reasons, So I don't know why they keep bringing him back I think Blake is an interesting bachelorette one. well because normally you would expect them to bring back like a crowd favorite and I feel like Blake is kind of a more controversial I mean he's not like a Yosef right but like right. He's, no one is he's more controversial than like you know if they would have brought Joe like everybody loved Joe mm -hmm. right you know, I did read some defenses of Blake that I thought were like kind of fair. So like some people were like, you can't blame him that he was on Clacia's season, right? Claire and Tasha's season. That's true. But That's true. He went to go on one show and then like Claire just happened to fall in love with Dale in like two days. And that wasn't his fault, you know? And mm -hmm. so people were like, you know, this being the third is like not quite, quite the same as if it had been like, oh, he was on Hannah B season and then he was on Tasha's season. So I don't know. I, I thought that that was like a persuasive defense of Blake. I am skeptical. Like I can't decide if I like him. Um, that being said, when she like met him they have a playful vibe mm -hmm. that i have to each other outside of the show okay so there's also a big kind of like there's some internet um rumblings about this so she has admitted that he did dm her so as soon as she got eliminated from matt james season apparently he sent her like a video so, okay, she said that this is really common, that like a lot of the, uh, so like, she's like, I didn't think anything of it, that like the men would like send a video and it's just almost like a Snapchat because like it disappears, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, hey, um, I, you know, watched your season. I was really impressed with how you handled yourself, like good luck, right? And the way that Katie sort of explained it is like, it feels like someone's like trying to put their foot in the door, but like she gets so many of these that she's like, I didn't, like it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, we chatted and I responded and it went back and forth. In okay. fact, she said like, she went to go look to see what they even had said to each other and she couldn't find anything because the way that these videos work is they just like expire, you know? Gotcha. Okay. But I think a lot of people sort of feel like, oh, in two years, are we going to find out that like you all really had like had this, you know, these exchanges before, but she says, she says, no, this was about it. Okay. So I was all in on Canada Blake for Claire's season and then kind of by default with Tasha's. Um, but I also, there's not really, well, I guess kind of now I'm, I've got a little for Andrew S, but there's not really any guys on, on Katie's season that I'm so excited about that I don't, like Blake, maybe we'll toss things up a little bit, but it kind of needs it. Oh yeah. Maybe. I think I'm like, I'm excited about Catboy, but we didn't get to see much 
you know like i think he's adorably dorky mm -hmm. uh, and which one is what's his real name connor he's at one of the connors oh he's one of the connors yeah one of the connors so so after blake kind of comes in and she's like hey i need to think about this right i'll let you know mm -hmm. <laughs> which good for her for being like i'm gonna make you wait a little bit i'm not gonna just let you come in or kick you out right away although i will say i was like i thought that it would happen maybe before the rose ceremony or like he would come i back. was surprised by how long it kind of took her to decide mm -hmm. okay so thomas comes in and visits katie you know mm -hmm. he comes in he sits down with her at one point she like kind of interrupt like or he interrupts her and she's like i'm talking and i was like way to go girlfriend during this conversation he brought up the word demonstrize he says that he was demonstrized by the other men in the house was Pop he trying to say demonized is that what he was trying to say that would be a good guess <laughs> i didn't know if he was like going for ostracized, ostracized or like, or is this yeah. like a combination of demonized and ostracized i don't know so Kim and I thought that it would be fun to come up with our own definitions of demonstrize. What what do you think? I just keep um, picturing like like the opposite. Like if you watched Gremlins backwards, so like they're Gremlins and then they become demonstrized and then they're the cute little Mowgli's again. Like, like I, I think it's the D, like, even if he was like, oh, they monsterized me. Yeah, like they've made me out to be a monster. Right, like, I would kind of get it. The D monsterized is very confusing for me. That makes it seem like they're like, well, we actually like you. You're not that bad of a guy. You're, you're, you're not a monster. See, I think that demonsterized is what Brendan did to his bangs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he demonstrized his bangs. It's, it's a hairstyle, a technique. Uh, well, if James would use less hair gel, he would be demonsterized too, I think. Oh, James is, James, James looks demonstrized. I wrote Trump cousin next to his name. He looks yeah, like I think he has family. a strong Scott Dizik vibe. Yes! Um, very strong so Step away from the hair gel so do you think that thomas is genuine i think he's as genuine as most of them are on that show i think he just didn't like use his words correctly and they pounced on him like from the beginning and then he couldn't fight he couldn't like redeem himself because he just kept digging himself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper so i don't think he's a terrible human being i just i think they're all there to in the back of their mind they're all there to be the next bachelor i don't know what people i don't know what these guys are saying that they're not thinking that in the back of their heads so maybe they're just mad that he said it out loud i think so okay so what's weird is i feel like in this episode i have not liked thomas except for i think that his ears are adorable but i think that in this episode i sort of started to empathize with them because i think that they like asked him do you, have you ever thought about being the bachelor and i think he was just honest and he was right. like yeah of but course. like that's not why i'm here now right and so I kind I did feel sort of a bit of like sympathy, empathy for him um, during this episode, and I felt like um, I'm gonna walk and talk because my dog. But um, he was. I felt like he was <laughs> he was being honest, but yeah, he just kept tripping over himself, and I think that he would if he would have said that earlier. I don't think he would have received the same reaction. Right. <coughs> Sorry. It that seems like they have to gang up on someone every episode, and he just was this one. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. My kids were uh, at the swimming pool. They just got home, and my dog is very anxious. Um. So 
Yes. So Thomas is about to go down and they head to the cocktail party. We like get to see Brendan's bangs in like all their glory. We have like a little, um, kind of like a sweet moment between her and Michael. Mm -hmm. And then we like head to the rose ceremony and right at the start of the row. Okay. These rose ceremonies, it's like all bets are off. Mm -hmm. Like we've had weird speeches during rose ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Like, and now Thomas gives this awkward speech. What were you thinking during this? So the facial expressions of the guys were like amazing throughout the whole rose ceremony. <laughs> so good. Um, I just kept like, I couldn't even pay attention to what he was really saying because I was so like, what are these faces behind him? Um, I do want to point out that I can't, I do not enjoy Aaron. I think he is the real villain of this season and he is just kind of sliding through it now. I find him super obnoxious and I feel like he's the kind of guy that starts fights in bars and he has definitely punched a hole in a wall some, at least one place. Um, because he always seems to kind of like start the argue, like the anger argument about somebody else, and then just kind of sit back and watch the madness unfold. Um, I appreciated that Thomas said, Hey guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I always get a little nervous when you hear someone apologize with a, I'm sorry that you took what I said the wrong way. That's not an apology. That's a, I'm sorry, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. Um, but I appreciated that he did it because of all the facial expressions happening behind him. Oh yeah, the facial expressions from an entertainment standpoint were golden. I sort of felt like he went and he had his conversation with Katie and he thought that that was gonna smooth things over and it didn't go so well. And he knew it didn't go so well. And so his last ditch effort was mm -hmm. to do this like weird public thing. Yeah. But then Katie really pulls one on Thomas, right? So she's handing out all the roses. She has one left. So brilliant. And she like calls him and everybody, that's when we get really awesome. Justin, by the way. Hunter. <laughs> oh, Hunter too. Yes. Their facial expressions are so good. And so the guys are like, I can't believe she's going to give him a rose. And then he gets up there and she's like, mm -mm. bye bye. To Kembe Matumbo, the not in my house, the basketball player that like knocks yeah. him his arms. That's what she did. She did. De she decembed him. That's the verb now. I had like such, I like on one hand, I was like, get it, girl. Right. You know, and then on the other hand, I was just like, oh. I like feel like he's just kind of a dumb dude that like hasn't been able to like express himself well and he's been honest poorly maybe even inappropriately but like and now like oh I don't know yeah. I like simultaneously like wanted to like give her a high five and I wouldn't go so far to say that like I wanted to give him a hug, but like I did feel like a little bit of sympathy for him. Yeah, yeah. It's hot. I mean, being rejected sucks. And then to be rejected in that way in front of guys who are celebrating your rejection is not cool. Like, no, she didn't get another rose, did she? No, she, I, also, I, think, she, I think he would have gotten it if, all of this stuff hadn't come out. I think um, because, but now she has it for Blake, I guess. Oh, I hadn't thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. So Thomas went home, Christian, I was kind of sad about that. Connor C, who I didn't know who he was. No memory of Connor C. And David. Also, no memory of David. David. Did I write about David? I don't know. I didn't remember him. There were several. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
So there's still a lot of guys we don't know, right? Yeah. So there's Andrew M, like Brendan with the bangs. Like that's all I know about him is he's yeah. got bad bangs. Yeah. Um, Hunter, we've seen some of, and we have like a little bit, um, he's got great tattoos, but like, we don't know much about Hunter yet. I think he's a single. He's the one who's divorced, right? I think. Yeah. And has two kids, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Jane. So I have a question for you. His nose was very red at the cocktail party. Was he cold or was he drunk? Mm. I don't know. Probably not. Well, you know, I was going to say probably not cold, but they were saying they're in New Mexico and they at couldn't night. believe how chilly it was at night. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's, he's, maybe he didn't pack appropriately. Maybe. But he could have been drunk too. Um, James, I don't really remember James. That's the box guy, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. You're right. Um, yeah. Justin, Courtney, Josh, like, all of them, like we've seen some, like Courtney, we've seen some, but like, we don't really know them that well. Um, and some of the people that are left, I would say sort of the front runners seem to be Greg, mm -hmm. Connor, Mike, Michael, and then I think Blake now. Yeah. Who do you, who, do you have any predictions? I think Greg's good. There's something that's going to come out about Greg. I think he's because of how he's being portrayed. I think there's something, um, Courtney looks, Courtney was like shirtless for half of the, whenever he was on camera outside of the rose ceremony, he was shirtless. And when he and Thomas were talking at the beginning, he never stopped doing his reps the whole time Thomas was talking with him. He was like, doing his reps and doing his breathing. And I appreciate and applaud that dedication to exercise because as we know on The Bachelorette, all the men do is exercise when they're not with the, the Bachelorette. So I appreciated that. You know, Courtney, when, when I first saw his pictures, I thought that he looked like a, sorry, Courtney, but kind of less attractive Dale. And I don't see it quite as much now, but it's still kind of there. So did you, ever, do you remember the, back to the nineties? Do you remember the group kid and play? Mm -hmm. I think he looks like Christopher Reed from kid and play. Ooh, I'll have to look. If it you up. are listening to this and you don't know who kid and play is Google them. And wow, I'm old and uh, check out the pictures and see if I'm wrong or if you're like, Oh, Hey, yeah, kind of. I think he looks like Christopher Reed from kid and play. I'm going to Google it here soon so all right let's talk about this last bit with Blake okay <laughs> she goes and knocks on his hotel room door so he's mm -hmm. not staying wherever they're staying I guess mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he answers the door naked and she's like are you naked and he's like yeah <laughs> and it's clearly like the middle of the night like probably like three in the morning yeah and then like he leaves and it takes him some time. And she like, by the time she opens the door, she's like, what were you doing? And he's like, I needed to like put brush my, brush in my yeah. teeth. Which I appreciate. Brush your teeth, sir. I liked that. So what I can't get over is I'm like, if it wasn't Katie, like, why do you answer the door naked? Like what, like for whom would- Was he expecting someone else maybe? <laughs> production assistant like I don't know so I love that he put a sweatshirt on but <laughs> he didn't put pants on no. and he locks himself out of his hotel room in his underwear yeah yeah it was really funny I thought it was hilarious I also thought that it was funny because like both of the times that they said goodbye I get it like Yes, this is like him sort of saying, like, I'm interested in dating you and her going, I accept your invitation. But like, I get that they really haven't dated or anything, but it's also been like really awkward to me in some ways that they like say goodbye, like, oh, okay. Like, I just knocked on your door and you're like naked and I'm just going to leave now. Like, mm -hmm. I just kept waiting for them to hug or there to be some sort of physical right. contact between right. them. And there wasn't. Mm -hmm. And yet, like, you kind of leave going like, oh, I think that they have a cool banter. 
Maybe he smelled really bad because maybe he's a night sweater and he'd been out in, maybe he's in, in a morning shower. So he was out in the New Mexico desert all day and then just went straight to bed. Maybe he just didn't, sm- maybe she didn't want to hug him because he didn't smell good. I mean, it's possible. I mean, he did need to brush his teeth or swish around. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I guess, are there any other things from this episode that we missed that you think we need to point out? Um, I think her dress was gorgeous. I loved this dress. I did too. She looks amazing. Um, I was not a fan of the clueless plaid sparkle coat dress thing from the night before. Um, I'm going to run through my notes real quick. Two, so Greg and Mike both have matching face moles right under their eye. So sometimes I get them confused because, um, oh, if we ever did the truth or dare challenge, I would want to eat a giant plate of hash browns. That's the, those are the cards that I would want to attack. Nice. That's a good choice. I think yes. I would stick with Twinkies. Twinkies? See, I don't have Twinkies. So I guess, well, I guess if I ate a whole plate of anything, I'd get sick, but the Twinkies. And I just think Michael is too sweet for this show. I just think, I just think he's too sweet and delicate. And now we know that he's way hotter off the bachelorette than on the bachelorette. With yes, the- you all, I sent, um, I sent Kim a video I found that he had made and he like had a beard and I was like, he like looks hot. Mm-hmm. And kind of muscular. And mm-hmm. I don't know that I read him that way on the show. Yeah. There was like, There's a lot of sweaters. And so I think it covers up his body. Yeah. I saw some funny memes that were like, what women or what men think women want. And it's like a buff, beefy jack dude. And it's like what women want. And it's like Michael in a cardigan. <laughs> and yes. I was yes, yes that right there absolutely right a cardigan holding holding a glass of wine out to you that is what women want <laughs> uh, wearing a cardigan doing the dishes i don't know <laughs> so is is there any takeaways lessons that we should leave our listeners with yes don't make up words unless you can define them and Michael is adorable and maybe he should, I don't want to ruin him by making him the next bachelor because I feel like that would ruin him, but let's get him a nice Hallmark show. Like get him on like a Hallmark dating, show. not a TLC. Don't put that man on TLC, but like a nice Hallmark dating show. That sounds delightful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will, I will say don't demonstrize your bangs. No. Uh, and also <laughs> the 90s are here, folks. That's what we need to leave you with. The 90s are back. <laughs> the 90s are back. Yay. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs>You've been listening to Batchadamia with your hosts, Drs. Daniel Dick McGew and Bill Henniger. All opinions expressed on this show are solely the opinion of the person who spoke them. If you like our podcast, please consider following us, leaving us a five-star rating, and a positive review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please share with your friends, family, and other ardent Bachelor content lovers. If you have comments or questions you would like us to address on the show, you can email us at batchadamia at gmail.com or on the Twitter with the handle at Batchadamia. Thanks for listening.